So let's continue our journey into meteoric diagenesis and let's explore the kinetics of dissolution and precipitation, ultimately leading to karstification. Well, I'm bringing you for this class to an oasis. You're welcome. Wadi Bani Khalid is probably the most visited wadi in Oman because it always has water. You can see behind me this beautiful emerald water and it's so tempting in the heat of the summer to go and bathe. And that's exactly what local and tourists do here. But you have to wonder where the water is coming from and why do we have so much water in this wadi? Part of the answer is, of course, that we have mountains surrounding the wadi, which is a source of water during rainfall. But in the summer, you don't have that much rain. The other side of this answer is that we also have fracture and cave networks that supply water to the wadi. It's impossible to have a cave network in the current arid conditions of Oman. And this is a clear indication that at some point in the Pleistocene, Oman was much wetter than it is today. So let's try to explore what happens to carbonate minerals when they're exposed to uh, meteoric conditions. So in this diagram, you see that we have the uh, weight percent of different minerals from zero to 100%. So that's uh, the weight percent of each mineral. If you do the cumulative weight percent, it comes to 100%. And time of exposure of these minerals to uh, meteoric conditions. Now, this is for limestone from the Bahamas that were exposed. And you see that in modern sediments, we have actually mostly high mag calcite, Mg calcite. So almost 60% Mg calcite. The second most important mineral is aragonite. And the least abundant mineral in recent sediment is calcite. It's less than 20% of the assemblage. However, there the solution uh, potential in meteoric condition and their ability to precipitate are vastly different. And you can see from this diagram that as we expose those rocks to meteoric conditions, magnesium calcite and aragonite are the first minerals to dissolve. In, fi in fact, magnesium calcite is the most soluble mineral of this uh, series. And the way it's, uh, it it's dissolved is actually by expulsing its magnesium and transforming into lomac calcite. Aragonite dissolves in a more congruent way. It is dissolved and entrained in the solution, but it will eventually reprecipitate as a low magnesium calcite. So the net effect is that over 300,000 years, the rocks that started with very little calcite and mostly aragonite and magnesite end up being very monotonic it's a single phase assemblage of calcite. And calcite dominate that assemblage in all the rocks. So that's an important lesson here about meteoric diagenesis and about the fact that we have to understand the kinetics of these uh, mineral dissolution and precipitation if we want to understand where we have dissolution and creation of porosity and where we have precipitation and loss of porosity. Because if you are precipitating a secondary calcite, effectively, as can be seen on this diagram, you're feeling porosity. Whereas if you're dissolving an initial component and not reprecipitating that secondary calcite, you may increase or preserve porosity. So let's see how this uh, works and let's try to understand the kinetics of dissolution and precipitation because these two processes dissolution and precipitation are not equal. So let's look at the different steps. Let's start on this diagram with having only water. Now, water can evaporate, so we have less water, or we can have precipitation, so we have more water. But what's important, of course, is that there's CO2, there's a CO2 reservoir that can dissolve into this water or can diffuse back into the CO2 uh, reservoir from the water. That CO2 reservoir is important because it will create carbonic acid, which will have a tendency then to create a weak acid in the water and then the potential to dissolve sediments or dissolve the, the limestone around the meteoric water. 
So now, if we have unstable mineral phases like magnesium calcite or aragonite, not lomac calcite, or lomac calcite is more stable, there's a chance that this mineral might go into solution. Because if you have the CO2 in the water and a weak acid, you can dissolve the unstable mineral. So you can have a solution process that essentially brings you to a dissolved mineral phase. Now, what's important to realize is that to precipitate a new mineral is harder than dissolve a mineral because first you need to have nucleation. So you need to form a first grain of mineral straight from the solution. And that's very hard to do. So you need a new nuclei and that's a limiting step. step. Once you have a nuclei, you can grow on that nuclei and so then it's much faster. But so the point of this slide is that dissolution is a one-step process, precipitation is a two-step process. So the kinetics of these two reactions are not the same. And in fact, dissolution is slightly favored because it's an easier process to go from a solid of, a, of an unstable mineral phase to a, solu a solute in the solution than it is to take the solution and precipitate a new mineral phase. Of course, once you have a stable phase, then you can grow straight from the water in one step on that solid phase. So really, it's only at the beginning of the process that this, uh, this uh, dissolution is faster. Once you start having the, the stable solid phases, you have a substrate, now you can grow. So the two processes only require one step. So that's a good thing to keep in mind.